Hey, shalom, shalom. It's Follow the Drips here. It's your brother Pete and my wife Savannah. Um, hey it's been a while since we uploaded a video, so we thank you all for being our subscribers and you know following us on our journey on Follow the Drips channel. So we have a great video, I believe, today that we're going to share with you about some insight whenever you're traveling abroad. These are for those who are expatriating or repatriating to a country for the first time or maybe a, a, in the time you haven't been there in a while. Just some tips that's going to really help you out. So today's topic is about developing relationships. And for this video, we're in Tanzania and it's entitled Developing Tanzanian Relationships. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we talk about that is because in any environment and in any country, uh, it's so good and it's very imperative for you to really uh, connect with the locals of uh, in the area that where you're going to be living. And without that, it's hard for you to establish uh, the right type of uh, energy, the right type of flow. Mm -hmm. uh, many things can go very, very sour fast if you do not have the right relationships. And so we're here just to let you know just a few things that is important with these relationships. And another thing about relationships is the fact that whenever you're trying to uh, grow in a place, you want to be able to have the pros and cons of where you are. And like in any relationships, uh, you want to have challenges here and there. And But the key to relationships is that you learn from them. So when you do not have a relationship, it's hard to learn from something that's going to really be able to uh, advance you later. Yeah. So uh, the Tanzanian relationships that we uh, have established, we're so grateful for. I mean, I tell you, sweetheart, it's like, it's one of those things to where, you know, I know the Most High has been watching out for us because, you know, if it wasn't for the relationships that we've been able to establish, um, mm -hmm. very great people. Tanzania is a beautiful place, beautiful people, great culture. But the relationships that we've been able to establish, I can literally say, has really saved our lives in many cases. Um, helped a lot of processes go smoother, mm -hmm. allowed us to really adapt and acclimate, or excuse me, assimilate into the uh, uh, community and whatnot. So, so we have four things we wanna uh, discuss about truly establishing uh, a relationship. Um, I would say a national relationship, but for this video, it's a Tanzanian relationship. All right. So number one, um, First of all, you need to be able to understand that there are going to be differences and similarities from what you're used to. That's the number one thing. And so we're going to be doing several videos like this in regard to the things that we've been experiencing uh, here. But relationship we thought would be first because without relationships, there's nothing. That's the very first thing. It's the very first thing. So with that, we have differences and similarities. As an individual going to another country, you have to equip your mind to know that things are going to be different. Things are going to be different. People are going to be different. And some things are going to be very similar, mm -hmm. but it's up to you to be able to, um, to really calculate those items in your head and how to, um, how to address those things when they come up. And so those differences for us, um, I mean, there's a plenty of differences that we've encountered. Do you have anything you want to talk about? I can I can go off some differences easily. Um, I have one. Yeah. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so differences number one is how they tell time. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> how they tell time here isn't the normal around the clock way. You know, they may say a way at a number that's not the same number on the clock that you that's go by. so good, yeah. And so uh, as an example, one of our good friends uh, who acts as our driver uh, to where we need to go, um, you know, he, I told him to come, come pick me up at a certain time. So at that time when you say it a certain way, and that's why he leave means in the evening instead of in the afternoon. So at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm waiting for him. He thinking I'm telling him nine o'clock at night. So <laughs> when we talked, we talked about that difference. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and understand where the areas were similar in the time telling, but what was really different. So it was one of those areas where we had to adapt to the way they communicate and receive time. So that was a difference. That is big because I've never heard anyone talk about the time, how Tanzanians do tell time differently. You might want to research that. Absolutely. So keep in mind, your norm can be 
Your norm at home can be a total difference somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So we have to be ready for that. And that is a, another reason why when you have a good relationship with someone, they can explain to you, teach you, help you adjust to where you can yes. now practice with that person and become more acclimated, which is gonna help you uh, adjust to every, everywhere you go mm -hmm. while you're here. So right. that's a difference. Uh, and similarity from your normal. Mm -hmm. And I know it's sort of, everyone has, diff everyone has different differences and different similarities. So for every family or individual that's coming out here, just know that what may hit you may not hit the other person. And so your adjustment may be just a slightly different based off things that you are used to or you can catch on to with the relationship that you have. I have one. Mm -hmm. So, and um, one of my differences um, that shocked me um, was uh, initially, uh, it's kind of funny, but it, here in Tanzania, um, of course, you know, the cultures are different. And the fr very first time um, I kind of understood the Tanzanian's mindset in regards to um, just something so small, but was way different for me. Um, and our relationship, our person that we um, were established a relationship with had to explain to us that the person meant no harm by what he said was when uh, one of our brothers had, um, was talking to another one of the local Tanzanians and they called him fat. <laughs> Um, and you know, we were like, whoa, but they kind of just kept talking and thought nothing of it. And we were like, okay, did this guy just call this guy out of his name? And so our, our local friend, um, had informed us that no, it's not actually a derogatory for someone to be called fat is actually a good thing. And then they explained why, um, that they will call you fat or biggie, um, because they see that person as like. A, a person of wealth or authority. Right. So that was like a really big that was a different culture shock that needed to be explained. Different. Yeah, because you know you can take things the wrong way, you can get offended, you know, and that's where it's and you know you'll never lose who you are, you mm -hmm. know. But the key is understanding that this is a country that you're going to, you right? Know, and this this country's been here before you got here, so it's best to adjust wherever wherever you're going. Um, so also within the relationship, in our case, the Tanzanian relationship, you have to understand there's going to be cultural differences. Uh, Tanzania has a uh, long history of many different cultures. They have, I think, over about 29 or 30 different tribes in this country. Um, uh, the nation and also Zanzibar is well known around the world for uh, the history of uh, slavery and um, just different eras uh, throughout our generations. So through the years, the cultures uh, around uh, Tanzania are, are just so different. So people in one region may behave a certain way, people in another region may behave another way. Like when we went to Zanzibar, it was more low key out there in Zanzibar. Yeah. Very low key, everyone's covered up and they have more of a, it was more of a Muslim uh, island. Uh, but when we came to uh, Tanzania and Dar es Salaam, we have Christians and Muslims, and it was a different flow, a different yeah. vibe. Uh, but here you are, wherever you're coming from, UK, United States, wherever you're coming from, your cult, your culture, I promise you, is going to be t completely different. Yeah. And understanding that when someone is following their culture and you're following yours, it's easy to become offended if something crosses over. Mm -hmm. So my, our best advice to you is to understand, be understanding in those differences and know that everyone is not on the same cultural wave that you may be on. And for you to respect their culture as they respect yours as well. Because what we found here in Tanzania is that as we express every, to, to the locals who we are, who we believe ourselves to be and how we carry ourselves, they respect it. Yeah. And they want to know more information about it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really good um, because they're just a kuna matata, you know, kuna matata, yeah. and that is their initial thing. So yeah. 
Yeah, the difference, you can see the cultural differences too in regards to Zanzibar and Tanzania, you will see it. And you'll see it here because they're very, very serious. Yeah. Um, or you see someone very just chillaxed and laid back. Right. Um, but all in all, they are a very beautiful people and very peaceful. So there's not going to be someone that's just like, ah. Right, you know? right, yeah. And here's another thing about cultural differences. Um, we're from California, back in the States. Uh, sack town in the house, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, in, you know, in the United States, uh, our community uh, behave a certain way with one another whether it's the African-American community or if it's just, you know, just Sacramento in general, just Californians. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we go to public places, we go to restaurants, concerts, you name it. And in the United States, or well, in California, we aren't as friendly, we, we aren't as open and friendly with one another like I believe we should be after coming to Tanzania. Yeah, <laughs> and so, lot. yeah, so for those of us who walk around in malls and stores, and we say hello to people and we wave. You know, people may look at you crazy because they don't even know who you are. Right. But that's different here in Tanzania. In Tanzania, man, it's like you can spark up a conversation just like that. So we came up with this little um, uh, little jargon that we have now that we learned when we went to the capital city, the Doma. And we were joking around with some of our local um, relationships that we, we went with. And we say, you know, you guys love each other. You guys are like brothers and sisters out here. No matter where you go, you can ask somebody for directions. Every time we stop, all you guys say is Mambo Vipi. Like, which is basically, hey, how are you? Hey, what's up? You know. And, uh, and the person who you're talking to doesn't give you no side eye, don't ignore you, don't wave you down, don't cuss you out. Like, they I got literally stuff to do. stop what they're doing, whether it's eating, on the phone, or whatever, and will come to the car and give you the best direction that they could give. But that is a cultural difference. Literally, <laughs> Tanzanians can ask Tanzanians at any given moment for directions and get directions if the person knows where it's at. <laughs> but one of the cultural differences is being able to communicate with locals. And locals, um, the way you communicate, maybe from where your city, where or nation where you're from, may be different um, with when you get here to Tanzania, or for whatever country you're going to. And so, what we found is Tanzanians are more open with one another um, as far as communication, and more friendly. Rather, when we were in the states, uh, it wasn't the same way. So, you know, when someone is you know wanting to communicate with you, you can't easily be just so quick to resist them because it can be very offensive. Mm -hmm. So that's a cultural difference of communication. Yeah, the energy you can tell, like in the States, at least where we're from, is different. Um, a lot of our people, just, they just don't want to be bothered. They have this frown on their face, it's like, ah. And you're just like, forget it, you know, right. I'll use Google. Right. Um, but here, again, like in Tanzania, um, your, for instance, your neighbors, when you're sick and your neighbor finds out that you're sick, it is their culture and their custom to come over and check on you and also even bring you food. Um, if a woman has a baby, like whatever is going on, your neighbors are really like your family members now. So um, that's something that we're really not used to, um, at least in the States or right. in California where I'm from or we're from. Um, and you know, they could take offense to that too. So I know normally in the US, we're so used to being in our bubble um, and just being separated because, you know, just how we were. Um, it could feel really, really different. And you could even um, kind of misconstrue it or look at it the wrong way as if why is that person wanting to be in my business so bad why do they want to come over why do they want to you know but it's just their culture um, because if you live around one another they consider you family they which do. is beautiful so yeah. i feel like that's something that we definitely all can learn from mm -hmm. uh since we are the at least the black community is not really a community absolutely yeah that's a good one we are so that's cultural differences. Uh, number three, this is a doozy right here. So I got to really get on top of this one. In order to have an effective Tanzanian relationship, you have to understand and overcome the language barrier. Understand and overcome it. 
there's going to be a language barrier. And language is more than just the actual language itself. Language is also com also comprehension. See what I'm saying? It's also, so what is, you know, urgent to you may not be urgent to someone else when the way you say it. Right. So you have to understand that like with English, English is said a certain way. We say it a certain way for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. So if I say stop, you know, or if I say I need you to stop now, mm -hmm. you know, there's different ways of understanding that. So having a having a locals that can assist with you, overcoming language barriers, that's going to test you. That's going to encourage you to learn it. That's going to always keep you on your toes every day, speaking it, wanting to hear how far you go. And it's very, it's very respectful when you yeah. do stuff like that. So when you go to a country, please, especially Tanzania, do not come to here or to another country uh, feeling as if though that country needs to adhere to your language. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, it shows honor when you do it for them. So that is the area of our lives that we're constantly working on as a family. Mm -hmm. and, and what it does for you, it helps, it helps um, you adjust and understand where the, those Tanzanian relationships um, really are going. You know, you're gonna need it with immigration. You're gonna need it at the supermarket. You're gonna need it, you know, just getting some corn on the side of the road. Yeah. You definitely want to be able to be fluid and, and, and um, practice very effectively. Yeah, I will say too, I want to add, um, sometimes when you go to other countries, that country may be more fluent in English or whatever your language is that you're going to visit because I know some African nations speak French and um, whatever else but here in Tanzania what we have found in our experience is we found more Tanzanians that are not fluent in English than there are um, that are um, and what you'll find as far as like the age group um, I would say some of the elders may not be uh, fluent in English or they might know a little bit to get by um, but what is really different is also some of the younger generation is not either and I don't understand why that is because they teach English in their school from primary school so when they're at least in you know of, a, of age to go to school they're learning English so you might bump into someone that really speaks really really good fluent English and then you might have some Tanzanians that are kind of will get you by um, or understand or pick up. And with that, you'll um, one of the good nuggets is to uh, download a translation app and start communicating with that person. Um, because what we have found is when we go to markets um, and we, we like to go to the local markets where all the Tanzanians go because relationships are big to us. And there is one of um, the places where we have found to meet really good people and establish some good relationships with the different vendors there. And with that said, we were able to acquire telephone numbers and just say, hey, I'm coming in today, or do you have this vegetable or um, whatever. But if that person doesn't speak English fluently, that's when that translation app will come in. But um, we've learned a lot with that. We've learned a lot with the translation app uh, as far as our Swahili. So you are going to be forced to learn it. And that's one of the good tools and ways that you can learn Swahili. Um, just like when with Uber and um, every other thing, every other um, environment, I guess, we've come in contact yes, with, right? Absolutely. Uh, as far as forcing us to speak. So even if you're not learning and you come here and it's just like, I really can't communicate with anybody. Yeah. Download that app because that app is going to pretty much give you the exercise uh, within the language. And then once you establish your relationship with a local, you're able to go back and forth and then they can tell you about the culture, yes. meaning how to address an elder, how to um, address, you know, whomever, someone that is in business versus, um, you know, more laid back uh, way of speaking. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, that's that's really, really big. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, talking about Tanzanian relationships, we were going to also mention that 
the relationships that we currently have in Tanzania are from individuals who was providing who were providing a service for us. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain soft skills that I would really advise whoever watching this video uh, to take note of. And soft skills are the things that are not taught in school, they're not taught in college. Right. But it's a person these are personality traits that you need to be able to show um, that goes beyond the day to day. Mm -hmm. And so that's you know showing yourself friendly showing yourself respectful, right. you know, honorable. Do you listen? Do you speak monotone? You know, how do you speak to someone? You know, how do you respect someone? Those things is what's going to really, really strengthen those relationships. So, for instance, I believe, you know, our, one of our first Uber drivers uh, was just so respectful to us, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, and we called Uber a few times and we started, kept getting the same person. We're like, we might as well just keep this guy as our driver. And so, we respectfully asked him if he would be our driver, and he's one of my closest friends right now, mm -hmm. you know? And so, also, I mean, developing relationships like with our, um, our clients, that's when we took a client store and talked to the owner and developed a good relationship. And so now we, we're getting, rather, we're developing friends, mm -hmm. not by just business, but by the soft skills. Mm -hmm. You know, showing yourself as an honorable person, showing yourself as a leader, showing yourself someone that's you know respectful and things of that nature um so we said language barrier right mm -hmm. okay so the last one and this one's going to be you know another doozy right here so i'm gonna call it doozy woozy all right <laughs> so uh to really really have a strong tanzanian relationship number four would be understanding the environment mm. understand the environment so <laughs> what do you mean by environment? The environment in many areas. So we're talking about uh, the physical environment, social environment. Um, for instance, the market. Yeah. The market. Uh, the which is this great food. The market is great. Go to the market. Go You'll to spend the market. less money at the market. You want to eat? You yeah. want to have a good health? Go, Go to, to the, the market. market. You know, not the supermarkets. The market. Local market. Right. That's from the dirt. Yeah. You want that food. Um, but the environment at the market may not be something you're used to. Uh, back in Sacramento, we had a few farmers markets, yeah. like, you know, denials and stuff like that. Yeah. It has nothing on these markets, okay? Uh, much respect. But the thing is, you know, when, when you're in an environment that does not operate in the same fashion that you're used to, it can feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? And so instead of being offended by the environment, learn how to adjust in the environment. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it may rain and uh, you may not have the same amenities. You may not have the same uh, sanitation that, you know, you're used to. But at the same time, these are people who, this is their livelihood we're talking about here. This is what makes the economy turn, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so your environment uh, is very key because most people may not be comfortable with it and it causes them to react or respond to people in a certain way based off your comfort, not based off your adjustment. Right. And so if you do not adjust to the environment, if you do not adjust, then you can really affect the relationships that you're establishing in that environment. So it's almost like you come into someone's house, they welcome you in, but you're telling this individual how much you can't stand their house. How do you think that Tanzanian relationship is going to be? Right, or you're just like, Right, you know, kind of tiptoeing right. around the situation. They right. can pick that energy up too. Yeah. Um, but when they see you coming back, um, they understand that you. That's another way of saying because you can't greet everybody there. All the vendors in the local markets, they'll see you because they'll call you over. But you're not going to be able to do business or do transactions between everybody. But when they continue to see your face and see you walking through, right. the next time you might go to their table and they, you know, like, hey, you know, you've been here a while and, you know, come see what I have or yes. whatever. And that is that leaves it more, um, I would say, easier for them to make that connection with you because they've seen your face. Uh, multiple times there at the market and they know that you're not just like ooh, 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 you know like oh, I'm not gonna come here if it rains or I don't like this and this is dirty right. and this is that it's just like no right. when you're in Tanzania act like a Tanzanian right absolutely and these environments are very key because 
it'd be so hard for you to be in these environments without a local with you. Yes. So, if, <laughs> if you do not have a local with you that know how to operate in these environments, mm -hmm. multiply that feeling you have by a thousand. Right. Okay, so another environment would be one of the government offices. Ooh, we. Oui. Okay, <laughs> so and it's, it's not in an offensive way. Whoa. I'm saying it in a way to where it's a cultural difference. difference. And yeah. so the environment of a government office for us in the States operate a little different. Um, the traffic is a different environment. The traffic in the States is just a little different. And so <laughs> seeing how our drivers and our friends drive in these environments, helping us understand how we must have certain type of adjustments in order to, you know, really flow in that environment as well. We've been to so many different offices here and there. We've learned how to adjust to the different, uh, um, uh, the different, uh, what's the word? The different- uh, Challenges. Uh, I'll say traits of the environment. Traits right. of the environment. Right, <laughs> sight, yeah. smell, yeah. touch, all that is there. And so, I must say, can I add, sure. I don't mean to cut you sure, off, so but really. um, I must say there is, like you saying, similarities in, in normals, because the government's offices compared to where we're from in California, there are a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Government offices run like government offices. Waiting in line for a long time, you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, so you want to go there with some level of patience. Mm -hmm. And so with that said, you might get to a counter and there's someone that's, you know, the person that's working there just like, yeah, whatever. Like they've been, they, you're like the 200th person that they've seen about the same issue all day. Same thing in the U.S., but again, it's a different language, different culture. So right. you might get a little more frustrated because first you don't know the language. Right. And if you're not there with a local to help you translate, you're going to be a little more frustrated and deterred, and you're probably going to leave. Right. So it's really, really important that you go to any type of government office or whatever um, and bring that person who you've established that relationship with to interpret for you. Mm -hmm. Because we even found out that there is a dress code. And if someone's trying to explain to you, you can't get in this office because you have on shorts or you have on flip flops. Right. You're not going to know and you're just going to think they're being rude, right. but the local will explain to you what that culture Absolutely. is in that environment. environment. That's good. I remember that. That's good. And so, you know, and also here's another thing with, with locals, they'll let you know. For, so for us, this Tanzania is so beautiful. Yes, If you guys can just see, like we're looking out our windows right now, it is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but everything is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's you won't sometimes know how an environment is until you get there, right? But when you have someone who knows the country, knows what the coast is like, knows what, you know, the middle of the country is like, know how it is up north, they can educate you mm -hmm. and help you prepare yourself. If you need to travel somewhere, you want to live somewhere, you want to just, you know, be able to pass through or whatnot, you're able to prepare yourself for that environment. Mm -hmm. And so when we went to Zanzibar, <clears throat> Zanzibar was an environment, but we didn't have a local. So the way we packed, you know, we packed based off of what we assumed it would be, and I think we did an okay job, but that same packing wouldn't work somewhere else in Tanzania. Yeah. So um, it's great to have uh, friends, uh, those who we consider close friends, that all you have to do is pick up your phone, send them a text, hey, I need some information about going to this environment, can you help me? And they are more than willing more than willing to help you. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, we have to be willing to receive what they have to say to make the changes right. for that environment. So, we went over four items. Um, basically, the, the one of the number one things we feel you need to establish is the local relationship, or in this case, the Tanzanian yeah. relationship. We talked about the differences and similarities mm -hmm. from your norm, being ready for that. We talked about also the cultural differences, the things that they do that you may not, or the things that you do that they may not, and respecting each other's culture and being ready to receive. Also the language barrier. I think that language barrier was a, was a heavy one. So that one right there is like, hey, you. the more you know about that language, you know, the, and for us, uh, being African-American, uh, the majority of Tanzanians we've seen here look African-American, so we know our ancestry is here in East Africa. 
So they don't know that we're African American until we speak. Yeah, they have no idea. No idea. And sometimes they'll think that you're lying they because you're some playing. Tanzanians right. speak really good English. Right. They think that we're Tanzanian because we look so much like each other. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So if we once 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 we become fluent in Swahili, they're really <laughs> not going to believe. They're that probably word. just the maybe they'll they'll catch the little. Dialect. But, I don't know. They might just be. Uh, we might just flow with them. Yeah, yeah. I've seen but a lot of. I think that's going to be a great feeling, though. Yeah. To know that someone respects the fact that you respect their language and uh, can just, you know, assume that you're from the country. Yeah. Yeah. And lastly, was the environment, and so that is um, really key. The environment, understanding how to adjust what to, which environment you're going to be in, and how to be able to have that Tanzanian relationship. Uh, with you to help you make those adjustments. Right, right. And yeah, if you didn't catch anything else, again, biggest thing is learn the language and then also look out for opportunities to establish relationships. Mm -hmm. When you go to the barber shops, try to see if you can connect with right. somebody. When you're, um, you know, using Uber, make sure you're looking for opportunities to connect and establish relationships right. when you're in the local markets make sure you're looking for those opportunities to connect there's all kinds of different opportunities for you to connect with someone to establish a relationship so don't forget that because every place that you visit you're going to see a tanzanian and again they're very very open and helpful yeah. Um, and, and they're just like, yeah, sure, take my number, you know, and well, they give you the number yeah, them. they're very, um, they're very peaceful people. Right. And so the faster that you establish those relationships and you look out for them, mm -hmm. I would say um, the better off you'll be in basically your transition into um, your visit right. or your stay. Um, but they're, they will be more than willing to help you um, with whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. And one more thing. So like we said at the beginning, we're not, we can't promise you that every relationship is going to be this fantastic. But yeah. one thing we do know is that through relationships in anyone's life, good or bad, you learn lessons and they help you grow. So there are certain relationships that um, you have to be able to take the pros and cons with and grow with. Right. But the key is understanding why you're there in that country in the first place. Long term, not short term. And relationships are not born overnight. They're for the long lifetime. Okay, so... Many blessings to all of you. Please remember to subscribe, you know, put the notifications button, you know, comment. share with other people, comment, yeah. you know, and, you know, there's a donate tab there in our description as well with our cash app. So if you want to contribute to our journey, feel free to do that. Um, we miss y'all. We love y'all. And uh, until next time. Yeah. All right. Shalom. Shalom. shalom.